So in today's video, I'm going to figure out what's the absolute longest run of LEDs I can do on a single data output with no power injection. Because what many people don't realize, especially beginners, is that the recommended power consumption information you see online is for achieving max brightness. Now, at least for pretty much all my projects, I'm simply trying to add some cool ambient mood lighting around my house, and max brightness is 100% overkill. I'm super excited for this video, because I can almost guarantee that you're going to be blown away with the results. So without further ado, let's jump right in. For this test, I'll be using the brand new Gladopto ESP32 controller with WLED pre-installed. Now, I just did a full review of this controller where I walk you through how to set up and configure 5, 12, and 24 volt LED strips. So if you want a complete rundown of this product, make sure to watch that video, which I'll link in the description. I'll be using a 24 volt 5 amp supply, and if yours has a barrel plug adapter, you can insert that into the input side like I'm doing here. Or if you have bare wires, you can insert the red line into the V plus terminal on the input side, and then what's usually the black or white wire into the V negative slot. And I will mention that barrel plugs are usually rated for up to 5 amps, while bare wires are generally able to handle larger loads. So if you want to convert your barrel end, all you have to do is cut off the plug, strip back the thick black outer layer, and then strip back the two wires underneath, and you're all set. Next, I'll be plugging in a JST connector into the top output, and even though you can use two data outputs on this controller, I'm trying to figure out the longest possible run with just one, so I'm only going to be using the top, which is GPIO 16. For the LEDs, I used some 24 volt Cobb RGB W strips in my last video, and they're really quite impressive. They come in two variants, one that has 784 LEDs per meter, 10 millimeters thick, and cut points every 71 millimeters and the other has 896 LEDs per meter, is 12 millimeters thick, and cut points are every 62.5 millimeters. And above and beyond the RGB, they both have dedicated white LEDs that you can choose to get them in either warm, cool, or neutral temperatures. For this experiment, I opted for the 896 LEDs per meter strip in warm white. So all I'm going to be doing, which you'll see here shortly, is connecting one after the other and testing out the performance until either the data fails or the voltage drop becomes too great for what I consider to be acceptable. Now as I'm getting the first couple strips laid out, I want to again reiterate that this video is going to be for those of you who are looking to add some long runs of ambient mood lighting around your house and are curious on just how long you can go if you don't want to deal with any power injection. As far as WLED settings, I'll pause it here so you can see what I have. And since the strip I'm using has 80 controllable zones per 5 meters and I currently have 10 meters connected, I'll put 160 in the LED count section. Then up near the top, make sure the brightness limiter is turned on, and I'll have it set to 4800 milliamps, which equals 4.8 amps. Now as I'm going through some of the colors and animations, I wanted to point out that I purposely wanted to have some of the lights next to the baseboard so you can see how cool the colors look reflecting off the white. I know the main use case for this type of setup will be for longer runs along your baseboards or around your ceiling perimeter, so this should give you a good idea of the effect. From a performance perspective, at 50% brightness, which is still way too bright for my liking when it comes to ambient lighting, there's no noticeable voltage drop, which means all the colors look accurate and evenly lit. Next, I'll add another 5 meters to the run to see what happens. I'll update the LED count to 240 and hit save. Once I turn the lights on, you can definitely see how the color looks a little different at the end compared to the beginning at 50% brightness. So what can we do? Well, simply turn the brightness down until the colors look the same and everything is evenly lit and you're getting a good glimpse into how I generally approach my LED projects. I'm not crunching numbers, I'm not worried about what the stats say I need in terms of power, I simply plug in the lights, test things out, and make adjustments as needed based on what I'm trying to accomplish with the setup. Let's now add another 5 meter roll to the setup, and in case you're wondering if I'm trying to make a specific design, I'm not. I'm just trying to fit everything into the camera shot. I'll update the LED count to 320 and hit save. So this is a fun little lesson. Different colors require different amounts of power. For example, this orange color right here looks good from the beginning to the end with 20 meters. But as soon as I switch it to the blue color, which requires more power, you'll see that the color towards the end is not accurate. And just like before, all we have to do is turn the brightness down until everything once again looks even throughout. I'll cycle through some animations and everything is working as expected with no issues. I'll now add a fifth roll which will put us at 25 meters long. This is now approaching the territory of where I assume things would start to go south. Once connected, I'll update the length field to 400 and hit save. Now green is another color that doesn't require as much as the teal blue, and shockingly, the color and brightness look even from start to end. But the teal blue, as expected, is going to need us to lower the brightness a little bit more in order to get the uniform look. And if anyone has ever tried recording LEDs, you know how challenging it can be. You'll generally have to lower the saturation slightly so that the camera doesn't blow out the colors. Especially during these animations, the room looks very dark, but in reality, you're still able to see your surroundings, so keep that in mind as you're watching. 
Next, I'll be adding a sixth roll for a total of 30 meters. I'll update the length to 480, and somehow the orange, green, and red look perfect without having to adjust the brightness. When I put the blue teal color on, it really struggles at this length and at this brightness. But I still have room to go, so I'll lower the brightness even further, and lo and behold, to the naked eye, it still actually looks pretty good. Now another thing to point out is that during certain animations that don't have all the LEDs on at once, you can definitely increase the brightness without any negative side effects. I also assumed at some point the data signal would have a hard time traveling so far in a continuous run, but I've encountered zero data issues and everything is still snappy and responsive. Now I did want to quickly mention that I just started a Patreon account, and I want to thank all my supporters who contribute directly to the channel. Every little bit helps me get closer to my dream of being able to make videos full time, and your support means the world to me. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'm truly blown away by your generosity. Now since this video is all about trying to find the max, I'll be adding a 7th roll, and I actually ran out of the 896 LED per meter strips, so this is the one that has 784, and a total of 70 controllable zones, which means I'll be increasing my LED count to 550. And at this point it's getting ridiculous, orange, green, and red still look even throughout the 7 meters, and for those of us in the US, that's right about 115 feet long. When I switch to blue teal, as expected, there is a noticeable change of color as the strip goes on. I'm going to turn the brightness down to as low as it can possibly go, and I would say for the first time there's still a somewhat noticeable difference in color at the end. It's not super obvious or obnoxious, but it's definitely there. Now even though the animations are still working flawlessly, considering I literally can't turn the brightness down anymore and I'm still seeing a tiny bit of discoloration on the blue teal, I'm going to call it here. But the fact that I was able to connect a total of 7 5 meter rolls together, one after the other, on a single data output, with no power injection absolutely blows my mind and I'm curious if anyone else is shocked by these results. So one of the reasons I feel like people shy away from the more DIY type LED approach is because if you ask someone how much power is required, they'll often quote the spec sheet and tell you for an install like this, you're going to need a huge power supply and many power injection points. And that is true if you're wanting to run things at max brightness, but I would argue that the majority of people out there are like me, who are just wanting to add some ambient mood lighting to a space, and I hope after watching this video, you'll see just how easy it can be. Now depending on how this video does, and if people like this real life trial and error type approach to LEDs, I might plan on doing something similar for 5 and 12 volt strips, just to get a feel for what those are capable of with this type of testing. Now if you wanted to try squeaking out a little bit more performance, you could do a couple different things. The first would be to solder your own wires to the beginning of the strip and connect those directly to the controller. JST connectors are great for convenience, but you're naturally going to lose a little bit of power using them. The other way would be again getting rid of the JST connectors and extra wires and soldering each 5 meter strip directly together like I'm doing here. And if you ever wanted to give soldering a try, I'll leave a link to this all-in-one compact soldering kit in the description. This is something that would have made my life so much easier when I first started, because hauling out all the bulky equipment that I bought ended up being the most time-consuming and annoying part of the entire process. And finally, I'm going to set everything up again using my favorite diffuser channels from Mazada. This profile gets rid of hotspots for any strip that has at least 60 LEDs per meter, but more importantly, it's one of the few options on Amazon that offers 2 meter length sections, which is a lot easier to work with, especially on larger builds. I'll get everything set up again so you can see more demo footage of how things look with and without the diffuser channel since I'll leave 1 meter of each strand out of the profile. I'm planning on using these strips for a project down the road, so I'm not going to be using the sticky tape right now, so instead, I'll weigh both ends down with some wood so that the strips don't move. I'll connect the same power and controller to the beginning of the first strip, and then it's just a matter of connecting the LEDs together in a serpentine manner. I already did the other side, so I'll finish up over here, and then you're all set. So from here on out, I'll leave you with some final footage of everything in action, but I hope you enjoyed this fun little experiment, and I hope you came away with a new understanding of how simple this all can be for certain use cases. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a blessed day. In the fading light my thoughts drift to you every night Cause there's something there I recognize A flicker turning into fire But it never lasts Cause I know once I cross that line You could go and change your mind and I don't ever wanna see you cry So I live with this disease Knowing you don't belong to me While you're sitting right in front of me Longing for you to notice me And this feeling is killing me But I'd rather live in misery Than to fall into your memory 
This disease 